This is day 16 of my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the exams, each day I'm posting a new video with a six mark question so that you can practice how to answer them. You can find a link in the description below to each week's questions and also the playlist with all of the videos from previous days. Today's question is all about the carbon cycle, which comes up in both the ecology topic of GCSE biology, but also in the chemistry of the Earth's atmosphere in chemistry paper two. Now, before you launch in and write an answer to this question, remember, as much as it looks like it, this is not an essay question and you aren't going to get given credit for writing in full sentences. So I would strongly recommend that instead you go for bullet points because this is going to make it much easier both for you to structure your answer, but also for your examiner to give you credit for what you've actually written. Also bear in mind that this type of question is usually level marked, and that means that you don't get six marks for six true things. Instead, you have to hit certain criteria, which here is likely to be linked ideas. So you don't just want to have a scattergun approach where you write down everything you know about the carbon cycle. Instead, you want to have your answer split up into sections where you include a key process and then all the information that you want to say about that process. Also bear in mind that even though I've said this could come up in chemistry as well, this is definitely a biology question because we're saying that it's cycled through living organisms. So your answer needs to reflect that. Now, if you haven't done so already, pause the video and give yourself six minutes to answer this six mark question. As we said, this question is going to be level marked. And so you're going to have a maximum of a level one answer if you're just naming the processes. But we may as well start by thinking about what processes you might want to discuss. So obviously there's photosynthesis, there's respiration, decay or decomposition, and just simple eating. You're not going to want to be talking in this example about dissolving of carbon dioxide in oceans, carbonate formation, fossil fuel formation or combustion, because there we're thinking about non-living processes. Now, in terms of additional information we can give, we can talk about which organisms are doing each of these processes and also a bit about the chemistry behind them if we know it. So photosynthesis is obviously done by green plants, but also algae and photosynthetic bacteria. Respiration is done by all living things, or you might want to specify animals and plants and microorganisms. Decay is done by decomposers, which are mainly fungi and bacteria. And it's animals that are going to eat other animals and also plants. So then we could think about the fact that in order for plants to do photosynthesis, they first need to take in carbon dioxide. So we're actually going to name that carbon compound for the examiner and then to name another carbon compound in that process of photosynthesis, the plants are going to make glucose. And that glucose can be gone on and stored as larger molecules like the polymers starch and cellulose. But also if we're adding nitrates, then you can make proteins. And you could also talk about how you can add other chemicals in order to be able to make fats and lipids and those sorts of things as well. And then we can kind of do the reverse for respiration. So in respiration, glucose is broken down and that releases carbon dioxide, which is then given off into the atmosphere. We could talk about the fact that um, decay or decomposition is about breaking down dead animals and plants. As I've explained in previous videos, a lot of these six mark questions are common content between the foundation and higher tier. And this question is one of those questions. In other words, it's pitched at about grade four, grade five. And so although everything on this slide is within the GCSE specification and is information that you should know, we don't actually need to write down every single fact in order to get six marks, because that would be a bit much for a grade four question. So for a level marked question like this, for level three, the mark scheme will say something about needing multiple processes discussed and strongly linked statements. So basically what that means is that if you've discussed two processes really, really well, you can probably still have six marks. Or if you've discussed three processes well, but not quite as well, that would also get you six marks. So I would say that if you're only going to discuss two processes in order to get six marks, it would need to be photosynthesis and respiration because there frankly isn't enough information about decay and eating to be able to make up enough information just from those two. Now, in certain years, when this type of question comes up, it comes with a diagram or with some extra information where maybe they've zoned in on plants and therefore you would have to have talked about photosynthesis. But this time we haven't included anything in the question, so you could probably get away if you had respiration, decay and eating. 
So then the question is, what makes a weak link and what makes a strong link? So it's basically about how much information there is there and how well you've linked them together. So if you start talking about glucose and that being converted into starch and cellulose, then I would say that's quite a strong link. Whereas if all you're saying is that all living things respire, I would call that a weak link. So that would just be a level two answer. In tomorrow's video, we're looking at another one of the chemistry required practicals. Don't forget that you can find a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also a playlist containing all of the previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again tomorrow for day 17 of the Six Mark Challenge. If you found this video useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE Science revision videos coming soon.